Hi friends. In this video, I am excited to demonstrate how to create a stepper motor controller using Arduino. So, without further any delay, let's dive right into the tutorial. But before we get started, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to press the bell icon too, so you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. Let's begin the project now. So, to make this simulation, I'm using the WalkV simulator. If you wanna access the WalkV simulator, all you gotta do is open up your browser and simply search for walkv.com. Got it. So, first, go ahead and click on the first link that takes you to the official website of the WalkV simulator. Once the website loads, wait for it to open up completely. Now, scroll down the page a bit more until you come across the section where they offer different options and boards. Look for the Arduino Nano, and when you spot it, select the Arduino Nano board. On the WalkV Simulator website, you'll notice two sections. The first section is for, for writing the code, and the second section is for creating the circuitry. We'll start by making the circuit, and then we'll move on to the coding part. To enter full screen mode in the circuit window, simply press Alt plus Enter on your keyboard. Let's add the 16x2 LCD display with I2C module to our circuit. To do this, head over to the components section, find the 16x2 LCD display, and simply drag and drop it onto the workspace. Next, we need three push buttons. Find them in the components, and drag them onto the workspace. You have two options to add the three push buttons quickly. The first way is to drag and drop each push button individually onto the workspace, positioning them where you need them. However, if you prefer a quicker method, you can duplicate the push button component, and three of them will automatically appear in your circuit, all set and ready to go. Now, let's get the main component we need, which is a stepper motor. To do this, head back to the components section, and search for the stepper motor. Once you find it, drag and drop the stepper motor onto the workspace. Next up, we'll add the A4988 stepper motor driver module. Head over to, Components, locate the A4988 module, and simply drag it into the workspace. Now, you've got both the stepper motor and the A4988 module all set in your circuit. To connect the LCD display, simply link the SCL pin of the 16x2 LCD display to the A5 pin of the Arduino. Then, take the SDA pin of the LCD display and connect it to the A4 pin of the Arduino. Once these connections are made, your Arduino will be able to communicate with the LCD display, and you can display information on the screen. Next, take one pin from each of the three push buttons and connect them together. Now, link this common pin to the ground pin of the Arduino. This will effectively connect all the push buttons common pins to ground. Let's get these push buttons connected to our Arduino. Take the first push button and plug it into the D2 pin of the Arduino board. Now, grab the second push button and connect it to the D3 pin, and finally, take the third push button and attach it to the D4 pin. That's it. Now our push buttons are perfectly connected to the Arduino. Next, we'll connect the A4988 stepper motor driver to the Arduino. Connect the DIR pin to D8 and the step pin to D9 on the Arduino board. These connections will allow the Arduino to control the direction and movement of the stepper motor effectively. Also, don't forget to make a short connection between the reset pin and the sleep pin on the A4988 stepper motor driver. This connection is important to ensure proper functionality and enable the driver to operate smoothly. In this step, let's connect the stepper motor to the motor driver using the exact same connections as you've seen in the video. Following those connections will ensure that our stepper motor and motor driver work flawlessly together, allowing us to control the motor accurately and efficiently. So, let's get those connections made. Now connect the VCC and ground to both the display and the motor driver. To get the VCC and ground connections, head to the components section, search for VCC and GND, and simply drag and drop them onto the workspace. First, Connect the VCC, positive power, from the component to the 5 volts pin of the display, and then link the ground from the component to the ground pin of the display. After that, let's proceed to connect the VCC and ground to the motor driver. The VCC and ground pins of the motor driver have a specialty, they can automatically detect and select the required voltage range. 
So, all we need to do is get the VCC and ground connections from the components section and connect them to the motor driver's input pins. For this setup, the motor driver requires a 12 volts power supply. Now that all the connections are in place, it's time to move on to the coding part. Head over to the code section on the WOC-V simulator, where you'll find the familiar Arduino code editor. This is where the real magic happens. In the coding part, we'll write the program that will control our circuit. We'll be able to program the push buttons, interact with the LCD display, and control the stepper motor's movement and direction. So, let's get started with the coding and make our project come to life. I have already prepared the code for our project, so you can easily import it into the simulator. To do this, first, remove the existing code from the code editor to make space. Then, simply click on the link provided in the description to access the code file. Copy the entire code from there, return to the code editor, and paste the imported code. Now, you are all set to run the program and see your project come to life. After all the settings done, start the simulation, and make a full screen. The system is equipped with three buttons, each serving a specific function. The first button functions as a menu controller, allowing you to access the settings and options displayed on the LCD screen when pressed for a longer duration. The second button is dedicated to changing the motor's direction, enabling seamless switching between forward and reverse directions. Lastly, the third button serves as the motor's start-stop switch, providing convenient control over its operation. Within the menu, you can further adjust the motor speed using the speed settings, and also switch between the three available modes, mode 0, mode 1, and mode 2, each tailored with distinct functionalities to cater to your specific needs. In the speed setting menu, you have the flexibility to adjust the stepper motor speed, ranging from 0 to 9999, offering a wide range of speed options to suit your requirements. The rotation control is not work in the mode 0, so leave it as it is. I will show you in next mode what is the use of it. To save your desired settings, simply press the next button, and then select the, exit, option from the menu. This will ensure that your changes are applied and saved for future use. The display provides real-time information on the current status of the system. It shows the active mode, the direction of the motor which is either forward or reverse, rotation information, and the on or off status. This allows you to easily monitor the system's operation and settings at a glance. When you press the third button, the motor starts running, and you will notice an immediate change in the display's status. By pressing the second button, you can conveniently switch the direction of the motor. This allows you to alternate between forward and reverse directions in the motor running condition. Now, let's explore the next mode, mode 1. In this mode, the motor operates for a specific number of rotations and then automatically stops. You can adjust the number of rotations using the, set rotation, setting within mode 1. This functionality is particularly useful for tasks that require precise and controlled rotation of the motor for a defined number of turns. The display will show the current mode as we are in mode 1, it will also display the number of rotations set for the motor. While the motor is running in mode 1, it will automatically come to a stop once it completes two rotations, as per the preset rotation setting. However, during this running condition, you still have the flexibility to change the direction of rotation using the second button. This feature allows you to control the motor's movement even while it is actively running. Now let's check the mode 2. In mode 2, the motor operates for a predetermined number of rotations and then comes to a stop. When you start the motor again in mode 2, it will run in the opposite direction from its previous rotation. This alternating direction feature in mode 2 allows you to achieve bidirectional motion, making it suitable for applications that require back and forth movement or continuous oscillations. As all the data is shown on the display, you have a convenient way to keep track of the current mode, rotation settings, motor direction, and on, off status. This real-time information allows you to effortlessly monitor and manage the system's operation, making it user-friendly.